Hello, my name is Kohei Miyazono. I'm an engineer and private pilot from Japan. In this video I'll show you my home cockpit. This cockpit is, as you can see, based on popular Cessna 172. Most of the components are my original design and made from scratch. The instrument panel is made from laser cut acrylic plate with 3D printed vessels. Fitted with low profile rotary encoder for dial knobs. The LCD screen is attached to the back side of the panel to display these analog instruments. Using Air Manager software. The avionics stack has traditional radio, nav equipment. And autopilot control panel. They are also handmade using 3D printing, laser engrave, and custom PCB design. These engine control levers are real aircraft parts. There is no prop pitch lever in original 172 cockpit. But I added it so that I can also fly variable pitch aircraft. Such as Cessna 182. I also made the trim unit. This trim unit has an electric motor to drive the trim wheel. It allows the autopilot or electric trim switch to physically rotate the trim wheel. This function is important to avoid abrupt aircraft motion due to trim position discrepancy when the autopilot is disengaged and ensure smooth transition from autopilot to manual control. Pilot seat position can be adjusted and secured. 355 inch large monitor is placed in wraparound configuration to provide external view of more than 240 degrees. This highly immersive visual system allows me to fly the traffic pattern just the same way in a real aircraft. Please check my other video for details of the design and fabrication of this cockpit. The main control device for the cockpit is Brunner CLS Yoke. This Yoke has control loading system, which is also referred to as force feedback system. Actually, it brings a significant improvement in my simulation experience. As myself being real world pilot, I can say that it offers much more realistic control feels and trim effects than usual spring yokes. I'll show you some examples in this video. The simulator is loaded with Cessna 172 mic. Older variant of 172 with carburetor engine. Now the aircraft is parked on ground and the engine is not running. At this point the roll axis of the yoke is free. With no centering force. Because the aircraft is stationary, and no aerodynamic force is affecting on the aileron surface. The pitch axis of the yoke is all the way forward. Because the elevator surface is in full down position due to its own weight. Ok now let's start the engine. Ok, fuel selector both all switches are off. And circuit breaker all in. Ok, mixture rich, cab heat or cold. And master on, throttle slightly open and clear prop when the engine starts the yoke comes backward because the prop wash lift the elevator surface upward this is exactly what happens in the real aircraft okay let's continue with the checklist okay uh, power 1000 uh, uh, rotating beacon on Avionics master on and radios are on. For this video, I skip the rest of the checklist, taxi, and run up. Now I'm taking off from the runway 34 at Nagoya Airport. Control force is coming as the plane gains okay. airspeed. 50, Rotate at 55, 55 knots. Rotate. and establish climb pitch then set the trim trim functionality is the most significant difference of a control loading yoke from cheaper spring centered yoke as I can use the trim to relieve the control force without changing the input position just like you do in real airplane common spring yoke can't do this 
since they don't have the ability to shift the neutral position of the control force. Now I would like to demonstrate the autopilot. The airplane is cruising at 1000 feet. Now I pre-select and arm the altitude of 2000 feet. Then set the vertical speed of 600 feet per minute's climb. And engage it. The airplane starts to climb. With physical movement of both yoke and trim wheel. Looks cool. I can also use, of course, lateral autopilot mode. Now engage the heading mode. To turn to the heading selected by the heading bug. To keep the airplane on the specific radial do, or from the VOR. Select the radial with course select knob. And engage nav mode. The heading mode is automatically disengaged. Once the airplane get on the radial. As the airplane reaches selected altitude of 2000 feet, it automatically levels off, and the altitude hold mode is engaged. If I want to manually fly the airplane temporary, without disengaging the autopilot, I can use the CWS, control wheel steering switch. It allows me to hand fly the airplane, while pressing the switch. When the switch is released, the airplane goes back to the course and altitude set by the autopilot. Also, autopilot can be used to ILS approach. With approach mode, it can track both localizer and glide slope. This is personal homemade cockpit but in this cockpit I can fly VFR IFR navigation pattern work approaches maneuvers bad weather emergencies with high fidelity and the CLS yoke has much contribution to its realism I will continue the effort to make my cockpit even better my next goal is upgrading my rudder pedals to Bruner CLS pedal thank you for watching have fun, and nice flight.